On this episode of Searching for History, we start the first of three videos about the harbor defenses, the Triangle of Fire at the mouth of the Columbia River. Along with Fort Canby, Fort Columbia, the other fort on the Washington side of the river, and Fort Stevens on the Oregon side, these three forts made up the harbor defense system. In this episode, we visit Fort Canby, the most northerly of the three forts. Fort Canby is situated at Cape Disappointment, the extreme southwestern corner of Washington State, on the north side of the Columbia River, just south of Ilwaco. In this video, we will visit Fort Canby's Battery Harvey Allen and hike over to the Cape Disappointment Lighthouse. In 1852, the War Department created Fort Canby at Cape Disappointment. Construction of the fort began in 1863 and was completed in 1864. Three earthwork batteries were built equipped with smooth bore cannon. This is a photograph of Fort Canby in 1908. We are at Fort Canby, which was once the northern defense of the Columbia River on the Washington state side. So let's take a look. So here's kind of the triangle of forts there. It would create an artillery crossfire that would protect the mouth of the Columbia. I assume this must be battery number one. So an artillery piece would have been mounted here, and I believe it was of the of a like a retractable where it would go up above the concrete there to shoot, and then it would retract back down. I would assume ammunition, artillery shells yeah. would, would have come out of there yeah. to be used here. Fort Canby was renovated between 1896 and 1908 after a period of neglect. Battery Harvey Allen and Battery O'Fling were constructed at this time. So those are the hinges to a door that no longer exists. It was a big door. Yeah, a big steel door. At the end of World War I, Fort Canby went into caretaker status, but was reactivated in 1941, and in 1944, a fourth battery, Battery 247, was constructed. The fort was deactivated in 1947. Today, Fort Canby is part of Washington's Cape Disappointment State Park. There's a diagram of all the ships that were this type of fort was built to defend against, I guess. So this is the arc of defense from each fort, what it could cover. So you can see Fort Canby had over a 200 degree arc of defense where it could fire upon approaching ships. I'm assuming this is where our ordinance was kept? keep saying battery, but really I should be saying gun or gun one, two, or three. All of this is battery Allen. And so behind this door is probably where the, the 
shells were kept for this battery. Mm -hmm. The same as what we're seeing here. You know, it's probably the same room has an exit on the other side. Yeah. And this uh, rebar gate you see there, I don't think that's original. No. That's just so we can look in. So here's the location of the second battery. So here's the steel door that um, would have been on the other side. It's pretty poor condition. So there's actually three. Too bad there isn't at least one gun left. That'd be cool to see. I guess they took them and put them somewhere else. I'm sure they ended up recycled sure in the end. Down, yeah. Yeah. Really beautiful out here. And then we're looking at this north jetty. And as I pan around, you can see ships waiting to enter the Columbia. And then on the far side is the south jetty. And that's Oregon way over there, on the other side of the lighthouse and the jetty. Are you looking over the mouth of the Columbia River? This is one of the most hazardous river entrances in the world. Apparently under the water there is the Columbia River Bar, which is between the two jetties. And the bar is a shifting sandbar where strong currents and windborne waves uh, meet the shallow water. So it's a, it's a navigation hazard. To enter the Columbia, uh, ships are required to have a, a Columbia River Bar pilot uh, guide them in. And we're looking over the Coast Guard station. So this is some kind of a bunker here. Is this a beer garden? <laughs> There's a bunker behind me, almost all the way up to the lighthouse.
That's the Fort Canby Lewis and Clark Visitor Center over there. It is amazing to think that on November 15th, 1805, after a 4,000 mile overland journey, Lewis and Clark looked out over these same waters. Constructed in 1856, Cape Disappointment Lighthouse was the first lighthouse in the Pacific Northwest. The lighthouse was electrified in 1937 and the light was automated in 1973. It's hard to see here, but apparently this lighthouse was here in 1865. You can see a Civil War era cannon mounted. Yeah, built 1856. The first lighthouse keeper was John Boyle. Had a 15 inch gun during the Civil War period. The lighthouse battery had a total of seven guns three of which can be seen in this Civil War era photograph. Across the way in Oregon on that side is one of the other forts we're gonna visit in a different episode. Unfortunately, the lighthouse is not open for visiting. Yeah. Well, it's really beautiful out here, and I would recommend everybody come and check it out. It's cool to see the walk up the trail to the interpretive center and then take a look around in there and then walk over to this side. Um, I think that's the best way to do it. All right, that's it for this episode of Searching for History. We're now gonna move on, and in the next episode, we're gonna check out one of the other forts that guarded the mouth of the Columbia.